friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing and I wanted to make you a quick video to show you what I do with the tiniest of scraps. I showed you a scrap bin the other day where I sort solids and prints together or separate. In this bag, it's a giant Ziploc bigger than a gallon, I throw the strip when you cut a 12 by 12 and it's the, the brand strip, I throw these in there. I throw a half inch that I may or may not use, a quarter inch, um, random strips. These are actually pretty big pieces compared to this bag. I mean, these are tiny, tiny. I don't put these in boxes because I would never use them if I did. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Uh, I know there's lots of videos, lots of ideas on Pinterest you could check, but um, I just like to think of it as a crazy quilt. And you could do your straight, it would be a little easier. I like angles, and it's also nice if your strips don't go all the way across. There's no, you'll notice I just um, put some adhesive on it and then um, laid it down. I didn't check an angle, I didn't do anything special. I don't really want all of them to go straight across all the way, so I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna cut it if you wanted to, you could do it on your paper cutter. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of the white showing because I have papers here with white. I'm gonna set this one over here. It already has adhesive on it. And I'm gonna come in and take the end of this one. And you'll see how this starts to come together. If you're a quilter, you, you've already figured it out and your brain is laying things out better than mine. If it's a paper I really like and I don't have much of it, I might even make it go all the way across the page. And I'm just using my Hermafix because it's quick and easy, not because I'm going to readjust them. You could use any glue. A glue stick would probably be really good for this. Uh, I like this solid. And you see the other side of this is the tag for the paper. So be sure before you cut those strips off and throw them away, you're looking at both sides. And I cut this uh, four by five and a quarter, so it is the front of a card. Oops, I changed my mind. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna do this, but I don't want any, see how that one's just a tiny corner? That one's gonna be too much work for me to fill in. So I'm gonna pick this up and move it here. Uh, if you've ever done like a pergo floor or something, think of it that way. You don't want the seams to come together right next to each other, you wanna mix it up a little bit. So I'm just filling it in. And then when I put my sentiment on these cards, I keep in mind that the card itself, the I mean the paper itself, this one's a little long, I don't like it. So I'm gonna take my scissors. You can see this is a very scientific process. I'm gonna cut it off there. I just didn't like it. And if I wanted solids, some of these are double-sided and I could flip them over. Uh, but when I do my card front, I keep in mind that this is very busy. So my sentiment needs to be uh, pretty mellow and it needs to be pretty strong or it will get lost. I saw one that I made uh, and gave away and I, I should have used a slightly bolder font on my sentiment or backed it. So just think about that. For example, I have these two out here. I could uh, stamp this one on a solid piece of cardstock or two, layer it up real nice and put it on here. Or if I love this and I don't want to cover it up, I could just do a small thank you down in the corner. You'll see that I tore these right here and didn't worry about it because I'll probably just cover it up. So you get the idea. You're just um, using strips. I kind of like to keep mine at similar widths, just so, sorry, my cutter's not in the camera, so I have to step out, just so I can line them up easy and not have to worry about it. I've got a lot of green going on here, so let's, let's bring in this strip for a little bit. And what I do when I go through these papers and I sort them, what I'm looking for is a similar, not necessarily matching, but uh, similar. It's really hard to talk and do a crazy thing like this. 
a similar style or a similar color palette, like maybe I want to do all stripes. These had a lot of kind of uh, vintage-y looking floral, so I went with these. This one has some, you probably can't see it on the camera, it has uh, powder spritzed on it, like uh, pearls or I don't know what it is. Around here you never know, but it shimmers. So I'm going to use, and I do like this paper, so I'm going to use more of it. And you can see, you can make a lot of cards with this bag of scraps that I have here. I've been accumulating it for months. And so you can just see how that's coming together. I'm not gonna do the whole entire card while we're watching this. I might be a little heavy on the stripes. Let's find, a, oh, here's a cute one. It even goes, see these were matching papers before. You'll recognize some of these from my videos and different things. Um, and I've just been cutting them off and piling them up along the way. And sometimes the strip is too wide or too narrow. Like for example, this one's tiny, but I love this paper so I won't throw it away. Maybe I'll have an edge I need to fill in or something like that. I don't know, but I won't throw it away. You can do any type of pattern. You could go in uh, squares and like take these and go around. You could go straight across. There's all sorts of things, no limits, right? Anything you can do with a stripe, you can do with these. So just keep this in mind. Be sure you're not throwing those things away. I've told you before, but I never showed you why. And I will post this card on Instagram when I'm done with it and you can take a look. So be sure you're taking time for crafting and relaxing and having a great day. The other thing I wanted to mention is I've gotten so many now that I might just sit around and watch some TV and sort these uh, if I don't feel like making cards. If you find trays like this that are 12 inches long, tell me where you get them. These are Dollar Tree ones. I like these. You could use shoe boxes. You could use anything you have, but it would be nice if they were the full 12 inches. The other thing is, you know you're going to make cards with them. There's nothing wrong with just taking this and tearing it in half so it fits in there just fine. Okay? Like this one, I can tear off the ends, just keep the green part, and then it fits fine. So when you're organizing your scraps, don't let them get away from you. If they get out of control, you will not use them. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Be sure and subscribe and give me a thumbs up and have a great day. Bye-bye.